think audacity has to factor into that. The audacity, like for example, like in the book Contagious, this they write about Barclays Prime, which is in my city, and he okay. does a hundred dollar cheesesteak. Oh, and, okay. And you yeah. think like who in the right mind would charge a hundred dollars for a five dollar sandwich? Yeah. If I, by the way, I get, need to edit that out because I'm in Philadelphia. If they heard me say that I called it a sandwich. I can get <laughs> <laughs> Now you got to leave it in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, that was everywhere. Like a... <laughs> it's like this place has a sixty dollar lobster roll. No way. Yeah. yeah. No we got to yeah. try this. Got to try yeah. it. You got to yeah. try it. Yep. You have to. Yep. Joanna Weeb is the founder of Copy Hackers. She's also the co-founder of the Boxcar Email Agency. Joe has written things that have taught people to generate millions in revenue. Big brands, BT, Canva, Glowforge, Intuit, Tesco, Google, Amazon, LinkedIn, Shopify, they're all using her expertise. These brands trust her to train their teams and customers. And she's a super popular speaker, she's a writer. Her online courses have had massive impact uh, all over the web. She's written books, uh, one of them that you may have heard of, your first $5,000 a month, 15 actionable techniques to turn your freelance writing side gig into a full-time career. You can see why that'd be very popular. Also, where stellar messages come from, start using your customers' words to convert them. This is <laughs> a huge secret that she's going to talk to us about. And your first $1,000, 12 actionable techniques to make great money in the next seven days as part of a freelance copywriter. Uh, this is someone that we... Uh, we have all learned so much from so many people, great copywriters, kind of lineage traces back to Joe Weeb. Uh, so please, internet, help me welcome Joe to the Digital Marketing Masterclass podcast. Joanna, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me here. I'm excited. So this is a, a, going to be a conversation. There's, uh, we're going to have a little bit of a hot seat kind of moment, but uh, Chris, take us through the format. Yeah. So... To, if you're new to the show, uh, essentially what we do is, is our mission to kind of bring on some of the best thought leaders in marketing, in AI, in uh, people that are helping us develop messaging that is changing how companies communicate. And so when I was reaching out to guests, Andy was just like, hey, you know what, you have to have Joanna on. And so we were lucky to have her, which is amazing. Yay. And so here's how the show goes. Essentially, each of us come up with our own topic. And uh, we go on for a little bit about why we believe it brings value. And then the other two get to question that topic. And then mm -hmm. we move on one, uh, one person at a time. And then if we have some time at the end, which we barely ever do, uh, we do a speed round. <laughs> okay. Yay. All right. So uh, as our guest, would you like to go first, Joanna? Damn. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I would like to go first. Um, okay. I'm hoping that all this audio is coming in well. So what I wanted to chat about today is I'm working on this book. So a couple years ago, Dear Andy hosted a, was it called a wine and webinar? Is that what you called those? That's exactly right. I remember that yeah. night very well. And I still have those notes with me from that, mo from that one hour we spent together. Yeah. You remember it well. You didn't have enough wine. That's uh, we'll fix that next <laughs> time. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was, I gave a talk called Money Words. It was a webinar on these money words. Um, and Andy said great things. And I was like, huh, maybe there's something to it. And then I was talking with April Dunford and some of the people in my like, uh, shine crew, this mastermindy mm -hmm. thing. Um, and they were like, you should write a book about that. So I started like researching this book. I'll probably research it for the rest of my life and never actually write the damn thing. But as I was like going <laughs> into these money words, there's so much research out there on word choice. Um, and I don't think we as marketers really, really think about word choice, like deliberate word choice that much. We try to get our headlines down to, you know, six words, all that jazz, you know, you're doing what you think is the best. Um, but there's so much that we can do with word choice. So I wanted to talk about some uh, ways that we're manipulated by the words that are, um, that people use people generally meaning the government. <laughs> so I don't actually want to dig too far into that, but those are always like the sketchier stories that you come up with. So, um, mm. I've been doing reading on uh, and research on, um, 
cognitive fluency. How easy or hard do you make it for someone to understand your message? Obviously, for marketers and people in product design, user experience, the fundamental foundational book is like, don't make me think. That's one Mm -hmm. of those Mm -hmm. uh, key books, right? And so it's been around for ages. We all kind of, even if you haven't read it, you know, like, oh, don't make me think. Got it. (laughs) I I get the idea here, right? Um, And so it's this curious coming together of all of this stuff. So don't make me think. We understand that. Don't make people think. Cognitive fluency, make things as simple as possible so I can understand them. Or make things hard so I can't, even though it looks like I should be able to understand it, but I can't. So what I want to share is a few examples of how... um, some of the more basic ways that we put phrases together, syntax, all of the stuff that goes like we don't have to get into the super nerdy part, but we know that words and phrases come together to create meaning and then we do something or don't do something with that. So a couple examples of this for discussion. Um, is everybody familiar with Cialdini's study on petrified wood? <laughs> I think I know what you're talking yeah. Is this an influence? It's, is this the one about getting people to stay on the path? It's the one about getting people to leave petrified wood behind. Okay. Yep. I'm, okay. I'm, I think I'm, I remember this one. Yeah. And when I first started reading this, I was like, I think I know this one, but I couldn't quite remember it. So this is the thing. So there was this whole, this is again about like the words that we use. Um, so there's this petrified forest and people would come into this forest and leave with pieces of petrified wood in their pocket. And that's a bad thing when it's like a national park and you get, you know, 200,000 visitors in a summer and they leave with 200,000 pieces of petrified wood. Like you got to leave that here. Right. Um, So the original sign when you exited the park was please leave petrified wood in the park. As a message, it's a good message, right? Mm -hmm. It's like it matches everything that a marketer would think is a good message. Please, okay, you're being nice. It's a (laughs) likability principle, let's say. It's clear. It's clear what you want. Leave Mm -hmm. petrified wood in the park. And that's the most interesting part for marketers, I think. So Cialdini comes in and rewrites this sign. and Rewrites it as, please don't remove petrified wood from the park. And people start leaving more petrified wood in the park. And so what's really interesting here is really basic phrasing that goes against what uh, don't make me think would say and what a lot of us believe in like clarity over clever all the time, right? Which is true, but there's always that asterisk of like, is it true, true, true? Or is there like moments when it's not true? So what's going on with please don't remove petrified wood from the park? With that, I also want to add on without answering that, because I think we can talk about it. I think it might be easy to talk about, but it's also kind of interesting. Um, This idea also of as you're making things, you have a choice to make things easy to understand or hard to understand. And we should sometimes make things hard to understand if we don't want people to do those things. Hmm. So this is... This is an opinion piece in one of the journals of consumer decision making, whatever it was. I don't remember. Um, It's about negative antonyms, antonyms, and synonyms. So a synonym, things that are the same, antonyms are opposites, right? So opposites often come in pairs. What is the opposite of black? White. White. The opposite of left? Right. Right. Up? Down. Down. Stay? Put. Go. Go. (laughs) Right? So... We've got these, like, we like know these things. It. I'm good at this. <laughs> <laughs> Andy. Yeah, good points, man. Um, what's the opposite of leave? Go. No, wait Stay. Stay. Oh. Right. That's what we would say. Uh. But if you were filling in a very important form as part of Brexit, you had two options on that form. One was remain a member of the European Union. The second one was leave the European Union. And now from a let's talk about interesting things in how we phrase stuff, remain a member of the European Union or leave the European Union, which one is a little harder to understand? Remain? I mean, the longer one, right? Remain a member. It sounds like, yeah, that's not as common of a verb. 
uh, it, it uses member, which could mean, which is kind of ambiguous. Right. I, you, there's, is that what you mean by cognitive fluency? Like, I've got to think yeah. about it. I see. I've got to think about it, right? That's the do make, like, if, as soon as you make me think, what's actually going on there? So exactly. So we can look at this. I, as a Canadian, I can't speak to what people in the UK were going through, but I've asked this question in front of a UK audience and they also said the opposite of leave is stay. So remain is not like a known opposite in the European Union or in the UK. So this is a very interesting thing that I want to put out there. If you want people to make a certain decision, make the other decision complicated or even better, make it hard to argue with. So mm. I can't, I don't know how to argue with don't remove petrified wood from the park the same way that I know how to argue with leave petrified wood in the park. Like that's pretty easy. Clean your bedroom versus don't not clean your bedroom. And your kid's mm. like, what are you talking about? Don't not clean. Maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just do it. I'll just make my bed. Cause this is weird. <laughs> um, and that's the kind of interesting thing that we can do. So that's what I wanted to, I have other examples, but I kind of wanted to throw that out there for y'all today. Oh, I got, uh, I got one. That, yeah. Yeah. Got one. Go ahead. Not prohibited. It should never be next oh. to each other, but a lot of people use it, and my brain cannot double negative Not my way to understand it. what they're saying. Yeah, because <laughs> people just, I don't think it's grammatically correct, but it's out there floating in the world. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's 100%. I don't know, my brain, I'm just what like, do you do with it's, not permi so you just it's, like, it's not permitted. It's not permitted. Totally. You're like, I'll just, yeah, just yeah. someone tell me what to do then. I'll just do yeah, whatever. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Just, yep. Side note, quick footnote uh, for listeners and, and viewers who don't yet know Joanna Weeb. This is what we're. This is why we're so attracted to her messages. This is that it's fundamental psychological elements, the little things that can make a big difference. So little thank thing, you, yeah. as always. Thank you for being you and for bringing these things up. Super interesting. Very consequential, actually consequential yeah. in kind of a geopolitical context in your example. Uh, this is big. This is big. Yeah. And it's going to, and, uh, once again, that was two years ago, you did wine and web with us. And I'm probably going to be mm. thinking about this one now. Uh, so it's, it's to, it, it reminds me of a Brian Massey trick where he had, he had like a substance abuse kind of treatment center client, and he wanted to yeah. get people to call and to encourage calls. He added friction to the online form uh. and increased calls by making the other path more difficult, cognitive, uh, mm. greater cognitive so load. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah. These tricky things that you can do, right? That feel tricky that I think would be hard to get approved in a lot of boardrooms because you'd have somebody in there going, no, don't do it that way. Um, arguing in quote unquote favor of the user, but the user needs you to make these like hard calls for them if you want a certain outcome. Now the consequences, you know, when politicians use this stuff the consequences are like dire obviously mm -hmm. um but there's also other word choice things i want to throw a couple more word choice things at you speaking of consequences um so i'm gonna give you three different phrases and you tell me which one is more likely to get or most likely sorry to get support for insurance coverage Okay, so if you're somebody who's looking for insurance coverage versus if you're the insurer, which one of these is more likely in the mind of the average consumer to get insurance coverage? Is it infertility um, disability, infertility disease, or infertility condition? Hmm. Which one? So one combination of these two words is going to yes. make the reader more interested in pursuing coverage. More likely to get coverage. To get so, coverage. Yeah, this is put out there in the world. These three options. You look at all three. Which one deserves to get insurance coverage? Okay. Infertility disability, infertility disease, or infertility condition. Wow. Well, disease um, is very strong. Disease yeah. is strong. So, so that's so that's a triggering thing. Infertility disability sounds almost like two different concepts. I'm confused. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't know what that means. Is that I've never heard those two words together. Mm -hmm. Uh. They're all kind of long words. I wonder if disease isn't too strong. Hmm. Okay. Uh, but uh, I, it's definitely the most triggering, so I'm going to have to go with B. Okay. You're saying yeah. infertility disease. 
I would say that, that that's the one I was going to go with too, but I didn't even know whether you're allowed to say it. Like, is it a disease? And I, I'm, please don't. That's I, the thing. It's not my domain. No. Have, it's not a disease. This, <laughs> no, and it, because it's it's a conversation about word choice. Like, right. yeah, you're yeah. not wrong. Anything this you're is not thinking a medical is not conversation. Wrong. This is a conversion copywriting <laughs> conversation. <laughs> I, I, totally. I'm still, There's nothing I'm still actually on, political here. Yeah, I'm still on your no. first one. I'm like, I remain in, <laughs> infertility diseased. <laughs> yes. Okay. The so in this study that was done, however many years ago, was very recent. Um. People were 4.6 times more likely to recommend that you should get insurance coverage or support insurance coverage if it was called infertility disability. Wow. Oh. 4.6 times That's more That's a huge likely, difference. Yeah. Versus infertility yeah. condition. Infertility disease was 1.7 times more likely than infertility condition. So infer hmm. infertility condition is the loser. This study was done in Massachusetts where insurance companies call it infertility condition. 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 Yes. Hey. Of course. Right. Yes. Insidious. So, this is I know. Right? Yeah. Tricky things. Um, and there's just a little fun fact on word choice. Okay. So there was exact same game that was played between two different groups. One group, they were told it was called the community game. The other group was told it was called the Wall Street game. The community game saw people cooperate 70% of the time, whereas the Wall Street game saw people cooperate 33% of the time. Very interesting, the words you choose to use and what they make people do. These are big differences. I know. These are big differences, especially, yeah. um, I mean, the Brexit one and like politics, of course, which isn't, you know, mostly what we're all doing here. But when the decisions are close, you know, when elections are close, when votes are close, yeah. that kind of thing yeah. can matter. So I, I immediately wonder, like on the on the policy side, like who gets to write these things, and yeah. and and who's paying you, Joe? How much money to like be the commissioner of elections in Florida? <laughs> <laughs> Oh Lord, no. <laughs> what's your soul worth? No, no, uh, but okay. So more broadly, so so yeah. I, I I know of you. I mean, many of us know you as a pro at like conversion copywriting, landing page, uh, email copy, calls to action. Uh, how how can you know mere mortals like us apply this uh, for good, not not uh, for the greater good? Yeah, I think. I mean, what I like to take away is. Um, when I apply it to business, let's look at the one that's like this whole idea of de-optimize the option that you don't want people to choose. Hmm. So there are always going to be options we don't want people to choose. And I think a SaaS company, for example, can apply this. This is one that I uh, recommend a lot of the time. If you're on a pricing page, you're a SaaS company, let's say you have a pricing page. Oftentimes you want people to choose the middle tier or the more expensive tier. And then you have this cheap free tier. Or the like $9 a month tier. Mm -hmm. And you call that one basic. And then you call the tier you want them to buy premium. And then you call the other tier enterprise or business. And what I would say is, which is the easiest of those to understand? Which one can I get right away? Do I understand basic? Do I understand premium? Do I understand business? I might understand business, but it's way over at that end. Mm -hmm. So I'm really probably comparing between basic and premium. Mm -hmm. And we think, oh, that's good. People want to be premium, but people understand basic. So I would say de-optimize basic, make it a really weird word. And the one I recommend is like, elemental and really just go into thesaurus.com and type basic and see what other like synonyms come up mm. choose the one that's a little tough to understand where you're mm. like i don't know if i'm mm. elemental <laughs> like what even is <laughs> elemental i don't know so i'll try premium instead um those are the kinds of like ways that we can apply this right it's not dark or shady or anything i mean yeah. You know you want them to choose this one. You're already throwing resources at getting them to like focus on this yeah. certain uh, one. So just de-optimize the ones you don't want them to choose by like mm -hmm. using hard to understand words and phrases. We're already doing that, right? Like, have you ever been to the pricing page and they'll have three different things, but the one in the middle, the box is just bigger and popping out. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I'm not Goldilocks. afraid to like totally. emphasize the words too. You know? Yeah. Just yeah. choose a harder word. 
And that's mm-hmm. like, just going to shove that one out of the way, not for everyone, but that's what conversion rate optimization is all about, right? Little tweaks that make these bigger changes. Yeah. It is, but it's also counterintuitive what you're suggesting. And I think a lot of people may be thinking what I'm thinking, which is conversion optimization is about making the, you know, is about the desired action. But what you're mm. saying is to, it, it's actually partly de-optimizing mm. yeah. the, the, the less desired action. Yeah, which I it's don't, the gray I, button. Yeah. I never hear that. I don't hear that much. No, this is not my You don't talk about it. I don't talk I talk about maximizing through rates all the time and mm. I don't talk mm. about that. So you're helping yeah. me. It's really interesting. Mm. Um, I often say like specificity correlates with conversion. Yeah. Sort of like clarity. Yeah. Uh, so just to make just to add ambiguity or mm. vague term or an uncommon yeah. word or something where that's um, Yeah. really interesting. Great. Yeah. <laughs> uh so it's that, you know, any commerce site has buy now and then read our terms and conditions and add to wait list. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. Like, yeah. I put this on my wish list, but I have to read comments for like, you know, like yeah. I yeah. wonder if how you else don't you can choose that. Right. Yeah. Make the make yeah. the non-desired action more uh, sound like it has more friction or more, it's more confusing. Yeah. Like for SaaS companies who are always trying to get people to stop canceling. So they make it like hard to find the button, which just makes you angrier at them, right? Like I'm going to cancel Mm -hmm. you. And now it's my mission all afternoon to find out where this freaking button is. Um, Instead, you can leave the button there, make it gray and have it like read don't remain. Mm. And that's canceling. (laughs) But I'm like, (laughs) the hell is this? Like, do I click it? Um, Mm -hmm. So little tweaks that you can make, right? Play around with de-optimizing the thing you don't want them to do. Yeah. Really interesting. Yeah. Wow. I can't wait to read this book. you got to write it. I just like researching it. And then I'll just keep talking about it and eventually when I retire 30 years from now. Well, the one that I thought you were talking about, there's another study. I think it's also Cialdini. He wanted, it was like an old growth forest and he wanted to get people to stay on the path. Yeah. And there were four options telling you to do the desired thing or don't do the not do the undesired thing mm. or that others had done the desired thing or that others had not done mm. the less desired thing. So it was like, okay. I think the winner was like, it was like, don't be like those other people who did the wrong mm. thing. Mm. Um, I could find the exact, the exact examples, but um, it. it's uh, the different. And not, again, the impact was large. It was like yeah. a two or three X difference. Yeah. Yeah. It's shocking. Yeah the difference right when you're like i mean it does come down to people don't want to think and in this case it might it might have been like a social proof thing and all the other stuff that we can play with excuse me but it's wild the the changes that you can make and what they can do i love cialdini's stuff yeah have you met him no no have you i have not but oh. but if i were uh but he probably knows who you are you should reach out oh that would be awesome yeah. Gildini, call me. Ha- <laughs> Want to be my co-author? Yeah, exactly. He's like, calm down, lady. Like, calm yeah. down. <laughs> and for the uninitiated, Robert Cialdini is a very famous author who wrote, writes a lot about psychology and his book, Influence, yes. is like required reading for sales teams. Um, it talks Our a lot about the reciprocity it. bias. Yeah, there's a lot of little things in there that a lot of us know maybe. Um, yeah. You know, just secondhand. But if you read it, it's got—it's like the primary source for like a lot of these things for a lot of people. Yeah, and just like filled with just all his original research as well as other people's research that like build up to these primary persuasion principles. Um, that I mean, we could have a whole other talk about how they do or do not hold up today, um, but a lot of them still do for sure. It's fun. Excellent. Thank you. This is uh, when I introduce you or when I mentioned you and I talked about you just a few days ago, I was doing like this two day workshop for like a big group. I'm like, and now I'm going to show you some examples of grammatical forms that correlate with conversions and everyone just, you know, their eyes get big. <laughs> like, oh God, no. <laughs> no, no. There was a, I mean, oh, really? well, here's some of the ways that I've tried to summarize probably poorly some of the advice I've, and things I've learned from you over the years. Write a sentence that uses the the, the grammatical structure, uh, even if, mm. you can mm. work with us even if, mm-hmm. if you do that, yeah. you're doing objection handling, yeah you know, or write, yeah. A, write a sentence that has a grammatical form already and still. Mm, that was money words. That yeah. was one of your money words. I still yeah. use those things, you know. Oh, nice. You already yeah. have dashboards, but you're still not getting insights. 
Just write a sentence like that and put it on a web page. That's called conversion copywriting. Your shortcuts yep. are super handy. Oh, uh, nice. And and uh, anyone that has not at least you know dug through some of the blogs on Copy Hacker, I definitely recommend checking it out. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I love even if um, as well. Put your the thing mm -hmm. that you want, then even if or wait. Um, yes, thing that you want, even if, and then their primary objection. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a pretty good trick. Pretty good trick, Andy. Yeah. Nice. I saw, I saw you on a video, and you were talking about what the curiosity gap. Yeah. And the member cluing into that word, and it was so funny. Is you know that like what I forget what the rule is. It's like the law of attraction or something like that. Once that got into my head, I started seeing just other things that I was just reviewing, and then. I was like, oh my goodness, that, there was the intentional, you know, yeah. gap right there. And I remember just being like, now that that word is there, it's starting to make me start to want to see it and start to build it. So yeah. the, cool, the coolest story that I heard, and this was a guy from a TED Talk, and he was talking about, uh, he had his career, but he, his, his like secret hobby was to go to garage sales. And there was this guy who was really famous at these garage sales and he would have just the normal garage sales, but he would have a wooden box. The wooden box would be a question mark and everything on the table would be $5, $10, whatever it is. Mm. And the box was $200. Oh, and he was damn. always waiting to see who would open the box. And so one guy bought the box and there was nothing inside. And nice. he's like, this is such a ripoff. And his wife is like, you missed the whole point. Mm. And so like, what he's trying to do essentially is like he knew like he learned more in giving the value of two hundred dollars for mm. the curiosity if he made that three dollars okay fine whatever but like yeah. i don't know how to describe it but it seems like a very so, dramatic part of the ted talk and yeah. i was like oh my gosh That's <laughs> you know wild. and that made me think like make people reach make people reach yeah. just a little bit like the more you spoon feed them because I'm trying to be the most helpful content wins, but there's an art and science to making them reach because, yeah. you know what I mean? You take away all mm -hmm. of the value proposition when you just make it too easy. You got, I, I believe there's an art and science of stretching the mind to make it, I don't know. I'm, no, no, I'm no, not, you're, you're the scientist. I'm just saying this is what I've seen. I mean, the yeah. priming and anchoring is in play there because, it, because yeah. everything, like you said, everything was $5. Mm -hmm. Except this was two hundred, so the price yeah. is automatically. It's like strongly differentiated. It's yep. shockingly high. Like mm -hmm. it's like attention grabbing. You can't. Yep. You know, you're automatically wondering what could possibly be worth that much. So, I think yeah. it's uh, anchoring plus curiosity. You know, yeah. the 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 uh, powerful drive to fill in blanks and to um, <laughs> to you know see something get completed. Yep. Yep. Right. There's yep. we have um, this a program where there's a map that you go through, uh, but you mm -hmm. don't get the second half of the map until you're ready for it. But the dotted line continues and you know that there's more of the map. Yeah. And so it's a good mm -hmm. motivator. Like I got to mm -hmm. see the other half of this map. Like where's the other half of my map? Um, and that's like, you know, without that, mm -hmm. would you be as motivated to move forward if you didn't know, like, I need to see what's on the other side. I got to see that. Mm -hmm. um, I you think see that, the dotted line going there. Yeah. I, th I think audacity has to factor into that. The audacity. Like, for example, like in the book Contagious, this, they write about Barclays Prime, which is in my city, and he okay. does a $100 cheesesteak. Oh, and, okay. And you yeah. think, like, who in the right mind would charge $100 for a $5 sandwich? Yep. If I, by the way, I get, need to edit that out because I'm in Philadelphia. If they heard me say that I called it a sandwich, I could get lunch. <laughs> <laughs> now you got to leave it in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, that was going to be anywhere. Like, <laughs> it's like this place has a $60 lobster roll. No way. Yeah. yeah. No we got to yeah. try this. Got to try yeah. it. You got to yeah. try it. Yep. You have to. Yep. And there is a world of people who will try that. And the other ones kind of wish that they yep. could yeah. or would. But you know what they do is. The, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, they cut it into pieces and allow you to have it as an appetizer. So like a table of eight I can see. all oh. say, I tried a $100 yeah. cheesesteak. But it got him all sorts of press. I mean, oh, I bet. there's sure. steak, steak. It's not Chicago, but steak in Philadelphia is, it's, it tries to be Chicago, you know, or I'm trying to think what other cities, uh, you know what I mean? Like they try to be known yeah. for their steak in Philly. And is it actually special? 
the sandwich? Is there anything actually special about it? It's like Japanese, like ragu meat or oh. whatever. That, you know, like all of that. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. yeah. Once you say that word, it's like immediately intimidating. <laughs> yeah. Oh, people are Lord. like, okay, I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Yeah. Those words. I mean, that, that, that stuff matters. It makes a difference. Mm -hmm. It makes a difference. And the desire to complete things for sure. It's like, yeah. leave the European Union. Step one of two. It's like, yeah. 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 got to complete this process. <laughs> totally. Exactly. <laughs> oh, oh. Can't stop. Line. <laughs> Which is a Cialdini principle of commitment. Once I've started, I must complete the thing. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Cialdini. Don't you, guys feel, don't you feel the need to call him like the great Cialdini? <laughs> Like, has this magician name to him and magician. like everything he's saying yeah. so <laughs> yeah put him on like a red dazzling That's background right. yeah yep. i like it i've yep. read him so many times and 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 yeah. uh like heard his name said so few times that it almost sounds strange to me just the name just hearing the name is odd mm -hmm. It's Cialdini. Yeah. I guess that's Am i saying it wrong? I've no, said that's that, that must be life. it. That that's probably it, but um i just haven't yeah. had that many conversations <laughs> about him, but i've read a lot of that guy. Uh it's mm -hmm. good stuff. If you're listening, yeah. contact us and tell us how to say your name. <laughs> exactly. Robert, give us a call. We'd like Bobby. to have you on. Yeah. I'll call him Rob. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, Rob. Yeah. Bobby. Bobby. <laughs> Good Bobby. friend Bobby C. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever heard of the the so my kids love the greatest showman, that movie the Greatest Showman. Oh yeah, I haven't seen, seen it. That? No. Oh, it's incredible. It's incredible. Really? But hmm. um Barnum, who is the um the circus, you know, the Barnum and Bailey, the circus yeah. guy. And yeah. he's Hugh Jackman and he's he's so just amazing and wonderful and huh. stuff like that. It turns out in real life, he was like the most famous, in theory, con man of a businessman. And cool. so he had this museum. It was wax characters, but they weren't nearly as good as they were in France or whatever it was. But the problem is people would go into the museum and then they wouldn't leave and they were trying to keep the show going. And so they came up with the idea, have you seen the egress? Do you know what the egress is? So the like way to exit. leave. It's yeah. the exit. And yeah. There's this big sign. This is this way to the egress. And then That's he so would have funny. people go people and whisper in people's ears. Ah. Have you seen the egress? Curiosity. So they didn't know egress <laughs> meant exit. Exit. That's right. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's a great like form yeah. of a money word. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, put that in the book. Yeah. 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 Huh, I love that. Well, that that should have made it on the Brexit thing. Would you like the egress? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if they wanted to stay, that, and it was that the same helped. kind of thing, though, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Yep. Tricky, hmm. tricky. tricky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, Andy. I think that you are up. Okay. Yeah. I'll Thank be... you, Joanne. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so here's yeah. a topic I, that that comes up a lot. Uh, Chris, I kind of quote some something you said about this once. Uh, it comes up kind of in the context of AI because how can we differentiate ourselves from AI? And mm -hmm. I've always reserved the word thought leadership to mean something different than no, than most content. Uh, I had the chance to ask a quick question to Seth Godin at the end of a presentation once, and, and I asked him about thought leadership, and he immediately said, thought leadership automatically creates tension. Uh, you have to be willing to be wrong. Uh, someone, uh, in other words, like, if you can't disagree with it, it's not thought leadership. So a lot of people kind of substitute the word, you know, you know, Content marketing and thought leadership as, as if they're interchangeable. Uh, I I would argue they're not, and that we should reserve the definition of thought leadership to mean basically strong opinion content or planting a flag or taking a stand for something. With that in mind, I mean I think it's it's an easy way to differentiate content from uh, the sort of AI driven stuff because AI literally doesn't have a perspective on things. You know, you can prompt it to try to have one or simulate one, but uh, and then just just generally like this is. It's such a powerful approach. It's so rare. It makes you uncomfortable even considering it. But try this. See, like in your content, like um, you know, just ask yourself, what questions are people in my category afraid to answer? What do I believe is likely that other people think won't happen? You know, or um, you know, what do I think people should stop doing right away? What's the wrong way to do something? Uh, and there's a bazillion little examples, big and small. Uh, there's some I throw out when I'm just giving, you know, I'll give you a quick one. Marketers tend to overbuy technology. They just spend way too much on stuff. Like, <laughs> you don't need all that. Marketers are kind of excitable and get it, you know. Yeah, that just true. makes a headline. Yeah, can't you imagine, like, how that, like, how yeah. ChatGPT cannot throw a punch. It's never going to say that. It doesn't believe anything. 
So mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that it's a good time. And then, Chris, I think of your quote. Yeah, now we have to do thought leadership, but for real this time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's just a point of view. Uh, and, and I'd love either of you to have any take on that. What do you think? I would love to jump in if that's cool. Um, mm -hmm. And I can only slightly add to it, but I think, yes. Um, Randeep Sid Sidhu, I hope I'm saying his name right. I'm definitely not. Uh, he gave a talk at Turing Fest. He was the product lead for the um, COVID tracker it, for the NHS in the UK. Um, and he gave a talk about being, about how villains make change and so i kind of feel like that's similar to what you're saying here right there's um the hero rarely makes change the hero's trying to keep things as they are make the status make things go back to good villains are the ones who create the change so i don't know if that's mm. helpful in adding to the conversation i love the idea of it uh there's a whole talk on turing fest and it's free and you can get it um but this willingness to be wrong. Yeah. If you can't disagree with it. It's not thought leadership. And that's like, you have to be okay with being potentially the mm -hmm. villain in order to mm -hmm. get that, whatever that thing is in this case, it's to be seen as a thought leader, or at least then you'll know that you are a thought leader because people disagree with you and maybe passionately disagree with you to the point that they're like, you're a villain. Yeah. It's a good talk memorable it's uh it, you know it's gonna just travel farther as far as just information go it's not uh it's gonna have better word of mouth it's gonna mm -hmm. do better on social it's gonna lead to conversations yeah. uh, my strategy is not that at all and i do mm -hmm. quite well at just publishing detailed how-to articles optimized for search that's <laughs> my content strategy in a sentence um yeah. but i think it's a uh it's a great opportunity and joe that's a good insight because it, there is no villain in purely educational content. No. The how-to article, there's what's the villain? Yeah. It's not, there's no, there's no trigger. It's, it's, no. it's for people after they've decided to make a change. But, but mm. maybe, let's add this. Mm. Do you agree? The um, thought leadership is better when you're targeting a more senior audience. Mm. Yeah. They, they that, want a perspective. They want a way to think about things. And it's the yeah. more junior practitioner who needs the stuff I kind of do, like the how-to, detailed step-by-step -step things. But the senior leaders love how-tos as well, though. Hmm. Like, they buy the how-to books, too, right? Like, but you should have... So I think about, like, April Dunford's obviously awesome. Mm -hmm. It's purchased by a lot of... you. Yeah, right? Purchased sure. by a lot of leaders. <laughs> exactly. It. Oh, I can't see it, unfortunately. But, I, yeah, I... I don't think I have it behind me, but I know it's in my house. Yeah, um, it, uh, it's and it breaks edit, down yeah. mm -hmm. how to, right? Like it's got steps and things, but maybe that's because positioning, maybe it's like, well, the topic that you're a thought leader on, if it's really misunderstood, then maybe that's got something to do with it because everybody gets positioning wrong. Like everybody gets yeah. it wrong. She does take a stand. I mean, the beginning of that book is yeah. like what it's not. This is not yeah. positioning. What you, what you thought it was, that's not it. Yes. Positioning isn't true. this and it's not this. Also, positioning is a kind of a strategic topic. It's a higher yeah. level thing. It's not yes. like a, I mean, okay. it's a big picture concept yeah. generally. Yeah. Positioning. Someone lower level is not going to be interested in that. So if it is a high level, like a senior level topic, then you can take a stand. Maybe you should take a stand as you're saying, but also you can veer into a little how to at that point, I think. I think in one case, in this one anecdotal moment. I'm going to use my lifeline. <laughs> April? Yeah, April. Good question. I'm on the phone with her at this exact time. Everyone, what is that thing Andy's holding? I know. Like, Andy, that still has a cord on it. I don't know. You know I know. That. Is it uh, there as a paperweight or is it this really is the very use? End, this is the very end of my the era of the polycom phone. Uh, uh, I can make a strong opinion statement about this, but yeah. yeah that, do, do, I want to hear it. Nobody needs a dedicated fiber line to power 35 phones in an office with an average of three people coming in per day. Uh, the the yes. blinking light on my phone means I have spam. Yeah. <laughs> That's what that is not means. a message you need yep. to listen to. No. You're fine. Yeah. 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 You, you know, know what? I, what I, I don't. I feel like it's a major disservice to the next generation as they'll never have that moment 
where you see in the movies with the corded phone and the guy slams it down like mm -hmm. 10 times. Yeah. Like, you'll never know that. Oh, yeah. You're like, or I am so angry right now. Sure. <laughs> yeah, <my turn. laughs> There's no drama there. No. Or, or what is no this drama. sound? Can you hear this? Yeah. It's a dial yep. tone. Yep. Yeah, oh. you can't hear it. Yeah. A dial tone? Yeah. yeah. We don't I mean, have a I, dial I, tone. I, I got <laughs> no, one for you. There's no dial tones on phones. I, I got one for you. Watch a movie and anytime someone's on the phone, see if they ever say bye. Hmm. Oh, I know. Never I always thought that was an American movie. thing, like not taking yeah. your shoes off. Is it yeah. not an American thing? It's, it's well, I don't know, but it's never, ever, ever in a movie, ever. Huh. Yeah. When yeah. I was a kid, I was playing <laughs> Office, and I said, okay, yeah. bye, on my phone call. And my dad came by, and he said, um, in business, they don't say goodbye. And that's like a life <laughs> lesson to me. Like, wow. oh, okay. And now I play Office differently. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. That's so funny. There you go. Yeah. I say goodbye every time. I say goodbye. Yeah. Oh, no. I, I am no, only saying in movies, like... They yeah. just hang up with their wife and they're just like there. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and, and they never do, they never make plans. Like, hey, do you want to go on a date? Sure. Yes. I'll see you there. See you there. Where are they meeting? Yeah, like, like, exactly. What time? What's yeah, happening? They're, they're just going to somehow know. <laughs> yeah. Always. I know. Uh, yeah. Real life is That's different. So funny. But anyway, yeah. I do, I do think this is interesting. I like, mm -hmm. I wrote down, if you can't disagree with it, it's not thought leadership. I think that'd be yeah. really interesting to use as like a guide mm -hmm. for whether you, I'm doing it or not, you know? It, it, you know, what's funny is I've been thinking about this all the time because I, unfortunately, I don't have a disposition where I like to split the room or I say something for shock value. Mm -hmm. At least mm -hmm. I don't think I do. Probably the people around me are like, you're the most dramatic person I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know what I actually do believe happens and mm -hmm. uh, is that as a leader of a company, I read things that would offend someone else in my company. And then mm. I read that thing so that I can share that thing. And so it's a very weird thing that I think a lot of times we think that the audience that reads your message, you think what's in it for me. A lot of leaders read stuff that's in it for an employee that you want to grow. Mm -hmm. So like everything yeah. you've been saying today, <laughs> Joanna, I'm like, Roy, you're going to have to listen to this part. <laughs> you have you have no even ifs. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like it's just a weird thing is that we yeah. will actually gravitate more so that we can have yeah. a teaching moment with someone under us. At least I, I do that. I, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I find myself doing that all the time because hmm. um, I, I write, but I don't write in a way where I feel like the, the formal, the good writers are – you know, they work for me, but they're down the hall. You know right. what I mean? And yet right. when I yeah. hand this to them, they do all that stuff for me because I'm just so bad. Like I have ideas. I put it out very raw and then they shape it. Mm, yeah. Okay. But then you go back yep. and review it. So it's important for you it's to like, know it, it too. Is. And yeah. It, the content dies in the back and forth in my, yep. in my world. Yeah. yeah. That's how you yeah. edit out the good stuff. Like the don't remain versus don't remain. right yep. like then you go like oh yep. that's not clear edit that and it's like but hold on it was strategic yeah. <laughs> right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. The, uh, wow yeah. yeah yep boy the conversion right. copywriter has probably t struggles to work well with editors oh the conversion copywriter struggles to work well with people <laughs> like, mm. it's, it's <laughs> yeah. a quiet lonely job because you're always ruffling feathers and do it this mm. way and they're like ah, stop talking just go right Hmm. Yeah. yeah. How much we, writing do you do now? Uh, some. I still write our emails. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's about it, though. Mm -hmm. when I, was I like to, to out, still. I just don't. Yeah, mm -hmm. go ahead. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Chris. No, no, no. I, I think there's a delay. I've been cutting people off all day. I, I was wondering what you feel like your audience size is that you're using to make sort of decisions on stuff like that like that a lot of the things that you're talking about mm -hmm. i put in multivariate studies i wouldn't put them in a b studies as much as multivariate mm -hmm. studies do you, do you andy you do a lot of a b stuff do you do multivariate too no not no. mostly no okay yeah. Yeah. you gotta have a lot of you gotta have a lot of traffic to to, to do, do multivariate, multivariate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah no and like the ones that i mentioned today i didn't they're not even tests that i've run they're just like academic studies 
um, yeah. that I was that like I've read cool shit about. Yeah. Um, but the stuff that yeah, I like, yeah. shared in Money Words uh, in Andy's Wine and Webinar, um, yeah, that was A-B tests. Because cause as you say, multivariate is just, it's a whole thing. <laughs> it's a whole, whole thing. I'd rather in most cases do an A, B, C, D, E, F than do a mm-hmm. multivariate. It's just, it's a really tricky yep. thing to run. Even if it's smarter to do it the other way. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. it's easier to do a split. Well, yeah. Here, I'll, make, I'll make a big statement as if I'm oh. trying to be a thought leader. Test it, and I'll be purposely provocative. I'm going hear, to disagree just, with it just, no just matter what. Just hear me out. Okay. You're a thought leader, Andy. You're a thought leader. Hang yeah. in there. <laughs> Testing is, in fact, overrated. That's like yes. sacrilege right there, right? Okay, because let's take a page. Any of us mm-hmm. goes look at, grab a random web page. Mm-hmm. Any of the three of us and mm-hmm. half of all marketers would see six things that could be done immediately that would be obvious improvements, almost like a software bug. Like that's a copywriting bug. Like this was mm-hmm. done badly. Mm-hmm. That paragraph mm-hmm. is too long. These words are too vague. That mm-hmm. that that uh, header has, you know, the page mm-hmm. is called Our Solutions, and mm-hmm. it doesn't. It's not about anything specifically, and the there's no visual hierarchy. You don't really need to test things if you know they stink. Just fix them. Fix it. Go write better. Go, you, you know it when you look at it. You haven't looked at that page in years. Go read it. It's awful. Go fix it. it, not, yes. it testing is when, yes. you're, when you've, we're, you're optimizing because you've made the big revolutionary improvement, yeah. and now yeah. you're iterating. So I think that, that people always talk about testing and how much data do you need, but when you, you get to the details, a lot of the stuff that people talk about testing, it's like, you don't need to test that. I'm just do looking it. at it now. Yeah, yeah. there is no yeah. call to action yet, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's tough, though, because when you do, like, a dramatically different variation B mm-hmm. versus the control, then you're going to s- more likely to see actual, like, lift that yeah. you can call statistically confident. So you want to do a b- oftentimes dramatically different design is going to perform at least you'll get a signal. Is it good or is it bad? Right. Versus just rolling it out. Um, and then you iterate from there. But I'll mm-hmm. add to your note that even if it does win, a lot of organizations still don't implement it anyway, right? If mm. like the CMO just plain doesn't like it, it's not going to be your new homepage, no matter how well it did. I did emails for uh, Wistia that I talked about in a few different events uh, that led to like, I think it was a 250 or 300% increase in paid conversions. Wow. Like, really good increases in actual money coming in. It's a good thing, especially since Wistia is self-funded or even was mm-hmm. buying back sure. at the time. Great brand. Et right? You need money. <laughs> so here's the money. Um, Chris Savage and I have talked about this so many times at different events when we're speaking the same thing about how uh, his team at that time, a year or two later, was still like, oh, can we please get rid of these emails? They're so long. Um, oh. And that's really standard, right? Someone doesn't like it. And no matter how well it's performing, you still want to get rid of it or you don't implement that new winning yeah. variation. Yeah. Oh, so why test long- it if you're not even going to do anything with it? Just like you're <clears throat> going on gut so go on a smart person's gut, at least, <laughs> for best results, <laughs> if you can, yeah. please. But yeah, the testing is, I agree with you. It's, mm-hmm. I want to disagree with you, Andy, so that we can really be certain that it's thought leadership. <laughs> but um, <laughs> thank you. I agree with you. I, yeah. I get ones and it's like bad. And it's like, I got it from our CEO and he never reads infographics. Like, a lot of people do. <laughs> so like, you're not going to do it just <laughs> yeah. because your boss doesn't. Right? Yeah. This happens like all oh. the time. I'm yeah. like, I'm here to make data driven decisions here. And like, here's the data that supports it. Yeah. But our boss doesn't. So. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yep. I've to worked with, that. I've worked yep. with organizations that sell data to data driven marketers. And I was like, cool, you're going to be so data driven. And the gentleman who brought me in literally said, don't even bring up data. We don't test. We don't use voice of customer to write (laughs) things. I don't even want to hear about it. We didn't work together very long. It didn't last. Um, But it was shocking just how like, just don't even bother me with the data. I I have a fantasy to put like a whistle and a bell on my desk. And whenever anyone makes like an opinion driven recommendation, I'm going to blow a whistle. 
And whenever anyone makes like a data-driven recommendation, I'm going to ring the bell just to condition the culture of my meetings to improve. <laughs> yes, yes, the bell is good. People would hate that. Play Taylor Swift and then play like <laughs> some horrible other thing. And Tom Waits. A lot more Taylor. Oh, I want yeah. more Tom Waits. <laughs> you don't like Tom Waits? No, I'm just trying to think of someone who's like, oh, uh, the, the the op- what's the opposite of, of Taylor, Taylor Swift? Swift? Tom yeah. Waits is pretty fair. Yeah, yeah. So, Joanna, have you played around with some of the AI technologies beyond ChatGPT4? Um, Jasper, uh, because mm-hmm. it's so focused on copywriting. Mm-hmm. But played around it in the case of Jasper. ChatGPT is the one that we pay for and use. Yeah. So Microsoft uh, essentially mm-hmm. double dipped or triple dipped. <laughs> Basically, they they invested in a handful of companies. ChatGPT, OpenAI was the most famous one, but another one was called Anthropic. Is and that Anthrop- the one? No, no. Okay, that's go ahead. Journey. Sorry, I won't interrupt you. But here's what, <laughs> what Anthropic does. I mean, cl- they have a program called Claude. And they released it to the public 10 days ago. Mm. And the outcomes that I'm getting, they're fr- it's free too right now, probably a freemium model. Mm. The outcomes I'm getting on it are absolutely insane compared to mm. ChatGPT4, all because of what's called chat priming. And chat mm. priming, essentially, Andy talks, you know, we both sort of teach on AI these, a lot these days. And a lot of times what Andy was talking about in his talk was saying we got a couple different things we want to accomplish we want the audience to sound like you i'm sorry we want the the content to sound like you or we really want to know our audience and there's a third one that i believe is called you want your ai to be a utility but that we don't have to talk about that now but so much of what people do is they'll jump onto ai and they'll just start going they Mm -hmm. don't give it any context they don't they don't prime it Claude allows you to put up 75,000 words into the system before you ever get started. So the chances of it writing like you and your brand is significantly higher. Once I put in my case notes, I put in my case studies, I put in my testimonials, I put in my top performing blogs, I put in uh, just so much content that relates to how I communicate. And then the first prompt I say is, you know, I am a digital marketing expert, cough, cough. And then I'm saying who my potential audience is Mm -hmm. only reference the materials that I've mentioned before. Mm. So that's step one. But step two is, is that I have tons and tons and tons of video. Mm. And so there's a free download. There's a free tool called Glasp. It connects to YouTube. It gets transcripts in two seconds. Mm. And then I will take today's video and I will say, how many different 1,500 word blogs could you ye- use with the origin of what we've talked about today? Hmm. It gives me those topics. Now, here's what I don't do. I don't say write the blog because yeah. I still don't believe it's ready for that. And the people that are just churning that out doesn't matter. But sometimes I'll ask for an outline. But just giving me, oh, I forgot we talked about this point, this point, and this point. If you just gave that to me, I usually have enough to riff on my outline and then riff on my on what I'm going to say. And most of what I use ChatGPT for is I talk as fast as I can and then I just put it in there and I say revise and verify. Mm, It'll re- revise. Yep. I use verify in uh, uh, Bard because Bard can access the internet. Oh, And so nice, it yeah. is this very like there's this dance now that was not possible 10 days ago Hmm. and it's very very interesting but you won't get it to write for you i get it to edit for me i don't get i i feel like i would be wasting 22 years of doing this job if i just press prompt and go (laughs) (laughs) because i'm opinionative of why i believe what i believe and i'm i tell little micro stories every chance i get like the Hmm. egress story would be i put those in blogs I, yeah. you know like yeah I, I like there's no flavor to yeah. blogs written by ai there's no flavor yeah what did you call it andy it's like drinking water <laughs> tastes like water yeah mm. yeah the um, but, I, I can think of applications though like so so tell mm-hmm. me if this is if, if this might work well in claude mm-hmm. i wrote a web page uh mm-hmm. i'm going to um upload robert cialdini's book influence mm. And then my next prompt says, you are Robert Cialdini. Review this web page and tell me what 
edits you'd recommend. Oh. Is that? Yeah. That would give us something, right? It would, it would, and, and a third of it might be garbage and a third of it might be wrong, but there'd be a few things well, in there. That, and give me actual quotes from the book that support your idea. You can ask it that. But the things that are garbage and the things that are wrong are kind of important. <laughs> That's my concern. And I've been really pro AI since, you know, it became a real thing. This has not been a long time, obviously. Like mm -hmm. December is when it kind of blew up mm -hmm. um, for copywriters, at least, and people who write copy. It became everything suddenly. And I was really, really gung-ho about it. But I was... And I, I understand the prompts. I prompt. It, it can produce really good things. So I've been excited. But recently, um, I was, I've been using it for a lot of um, organizing research into like tables. It does a really, really good job of like making sense of a bunch of crap you throw in there, um, which is good. So I've been using it to help me as I've been writing this book. Um, but what I wanted to do is I wanted it to analyze text because it's it's pretty good at that like tell me how many times this word appears and stuff mm -hmm. like that and it's like here i'll count that for you um and then you'll put it on it in a table and i'm really happy with the tables i'm so happy mm -hmm. um so i copied and pasted copy from an apple product page and i wanted it to synthesize like and to really go through and choose the most frequently used words and phrases and then organize them in order of appearance like or sorry in order of frequency top to bottom like most frequent to least frequent uh for the 20 most popular words and phrases and i did all the prompting up front etc i was really like stoked about this um and so it does it produces this incredible table and i was like thanks and then i went and looked at the words that it had chosen and i I'm, I wasn't new to prompting it. I know about this stuff. I didn't tell it to also consider functional words. Functional words being you, the, like articles, pronouns, things like that. And so it didn't include any of those. And you could see it not including the and but or stuff like that. Um, but it didn't include you. And for me, that was like... So I went back and I said, well, does the word you not appear here? And it was like, my apologies. And it updated it. And then you was, of course, the most used word on the page. And I'm like, one, I had to tell it to also include functional words. So then I had to teach it what a functional word is. Hmm. Tell it that. Make sure it includes those. And what else am I missing that I don't know, right? That yeah. I didn't think to tell it. And so I was so like... Damn it, I was such a big advocate for this freaking tool. And then it let me down in this. And so I've struggled to get back to it because of the amount of times it gets it gets it wrong enough that it can be really distracting. And we all know bad data is worse than no data. And bad writing is worse than no writing. Don't do any of the work then if you're going to do it inaccurately. Um, and so mm. that's where I'm, I'm pleased that Claude... Mm showing signs of hope <laughs> and i'm hopeful that you'll one day trust it to write for you but i'm jaded with where we are right now versus the promise of this thing you have to be so good at prompting in order to get the best out of it who's yeah, that good it, it, it takes a lot of time to become 20 percent more efficient <laughs> ironically it, <laughs> it, it takes does. a lot of time to make a amazing image in 60 seconds you know like there's yeah uh, yeah. I think, I, yeah. and I think that that the, I mean, the hype cycle. You can just tell like the expectations were off the charts. I just posted yeah. a thing about about AI the other day. It's like how to take data out of GA four and upload it into ChatGPT's code interpreter and and ask mm -hmm. it for insights. And the yeah. top comment was like, you know, I'm not blown away mm. by these results. I wanted mm. to be blown away. Mm. Like I wasn't hoping really to be blown away. Huh. I'm looking mm. for you know some some efficiencies. So I think that um, this think this a has lot a lot to do with what you know where we start. Um, it's weird to me to think that you'd really have a strong use case for AI because uh, it's you're not the person who needs like a little help on you know how to put some words together. Like generative AI, um, maybe for data analysis. I think maybe other use cases or to summarize something that you don't have time to read. You know, but um, what but do no. you use it for though, Andy? Because you don't either. Who, what, uh, yeah, I do what, not use it to write. Okay. Um, okay. I find it 
one of my favorite use cases is to uh, have it build a, a a quick persona and then check the persona against actual you know interviews when necessary and then the persona includes like what are your decision criteria for selecting a service like this and then copy and, and then copy and paste in a web page and say what's missing it's actually quite hard to do and it's an AI is a good application here what's missing from this web page based on this persona's needs like I did this yesterday for a company that do like it's like a welding school art art based welding projects for high schoolers the buyers the mom the parents right yeah. what does this parent care about qualifications price location safety okay great here's a web page what did this web page fail to mention safety oh oh wait a minute time out because it takes a real skill to know what you're not seeing like what's missing from this content yeah. So if you so it's very fast to just uh, you know prompt it a few times to get a basic persona and then copy and paste in a, a, a money page like a sales like a conversion focused page and yeah. just ask it um, like like what's not here hmm. it's a it's like a five minute round trip that can sometimes help you discover like you know a major gap so I don't care that much about accuracy in that context mm. you know it bias I'm mm. not worried about that. But mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm not asking it to do the writing anyway. Yeah, I'm just saying mm -hmm. okay. And also, you can ask it things like, you know, what's the relative importance to this this persona, mm -hmm. and then you can kind of reorder page blocks, maybe. Oh yeah. It, yeah. It, there are some things about it that um, where you know gap analysis uh, uh, mm -hmm. for uh, conversion copy on uh, key pages based mm -hmm. on a, a, a super basic persona. Sometimes you get good insights. Mm -hmm. okay. I. I, I use it for a lot of things, obviously, but I think one of the things I've been using it for lately is when I'm trying to create a pillar page, I will mm -hmm. uh, copy all the text on all of the top 10 results. And then when I, after I've written it, I would say, what is missing on mine that is in the top 10? And so I want to mm -hmm. make sure that anything that they have, if it still stays with my narrative, I don't just put it in there just to put it in there. But what I do yeah. is I'm trying to say, like, like you just said, was I missing a critical piece? Yeah. And um, I'll ask the data certain things, like how many times did they use this keyword in this mm -hmm. in this phrase? Mm -hmm. So things like Jasper and stuff like that will do that. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of weird. It's like Jasper and we I use one called Phrase. They give you what they give you. I was going to say I can't Phrase. Talk, yeah. I can't talk to it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Where like no. I like to sort of talk to the data. It sounds really weird, but that's, yeah. No, that's fair. Yeah. 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 And you moved on too quick. I was going to say, Joanna, you don't need AI because... A master chef doesn't need hamburger helper. <laughs> but some nights well, guys like me, need hamburger helper. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is great. I got um, one. One more. Do you guys have any speed round questions that were just kind of you're kicking around? No. I um, I have one, and it's still AI related, and I apologize. Have you? I know that I sent it to you, Andy. Um, Joanna, have you heard of Pi? P I, like the life of Pi, but it's an AI. No, it's an AI. No. Good yeah. topic. I'm freaked out by this. Apple yeah. just launched an AI product that is, for which the use case is like, does my boyfriend really like me? It's not even a business thing. It's super creepy. It's the part of AI that I that scares me. Yeah. This is this is like it, it wants to be your friend. Like intimacy is a risk in AI, I think. Like let's not yeah. let's yep. not get too close to this stuff. It's yep. gonna it, it can social engineer mm -hmm. us easily. Uh that's mm -hmm. my perspective from what little I know about it so far, but uh not not great. Not really not really what we not not even a business tool, just like a synthetic friend. Kinda weird. When when you hear the the voice in it. It's not like you're hearing Alexa or whatever it is. The voice is so off the chain, off the charts, human sounding. Uh -huh. It will talk to you and then it always ends with a question. I switched uh -huh. it to like this English voice and it's beautiful. And my daughter, my daughter's seven, when mm -hmm. I showed it to her, she immediately like walked in the other room so intrigued by default oh, dear at this God. thing. Oh my goodness, oh, Evie, no. do you play Roblox or do you play Minecraft? Well, I play Roblox. Do you like it in creative mode? I do. I think dragons are wonderful. Me too. I was like, this is creepy. <laughs> Regulate that man. Regulate that. Yeah. Now. It's yeah. also, yeah. 
I mean, You're... interesting. No, you I have to try it. I'm not now. saying, Joanna, you do have to try it. I'm not saying you have to like it. I do what if think I fall you need in to try it and leave my husband for it. I Dude, know God. you're not kidding. The they made a movie about that. Suddenly, I mean, the, sure. There was a movie called Her. Her. Yeah, with, um, yeah that's what Lucky. I'm thinking that, of right now. That's what yeah. this was, yeah. you know. Huh. Um, but Andy, this is going to be built into Alexa. This is going to be built into Siri. This is going to be built into everything we talk to. Is going to feel try to feel as close to human as possible. And I as mean... as as marketers, like this trust barrier, it's either going to be, you're going to over trust it. Or you're not going to trust anybody because it's going to wear down your trust <laughs> defenses. Yeah. It's like we don't know. It's like we didn't know what social media was going to bring upon us. Mm. But like I, this is a whole other I don't level. even think we can see <laughs> the, the damage could... in weird ways that stuff like this could have. And it's, I mean, I'm selling AI day and night, mm. but not for the same reasons that everyone yeah. would think. That's I'm like a scared there are of it. some like lonely mm. people who need to talk to someone. When you think of yep. like lonely senior citizens who are not being visited, um, mm -hmm. they could use someone to talk to who feels like they get them. Children yep. obviously is scary because of being so impressionable, but we're all mm -hmm. impressionable, but like particularly, but like it does feel like for people who are lonely, which is could be really powerful. Sixty percent of people. <laughs> yeah, everyone feels so isolated. Yeah, I want yeah. it to work because you want people to get the friendship that they must be seeking if they're using mm. this. Right? They must be looking for it. Otherwise, yep. you would just like talk to your friend. No. Well, get a you know cat. I mean, <laughs> this is not. This is not what. The, the power. That's true. A yeah, lot of cats I mean, need homes. That's true. Yes. <laughs> It, it, it's it's just going to be extremely powerful when you feel like there's a piece of software that knows you better than any human yeah and, mm -hmm. and that you you don't make a decision without asking first you know yep. that you, you you trust it it and it and it can in very subtle ways uh you know steer mm -hmm. your thinking in all kinds of directions i don't what know this is sociology could... this is not marketing but I uh <laughs> i'm i'm a big negative on this on oh. uh, intimacy yeah. ai ai human intimacy scares me it's a giant risk and it maybe is the risk of ai in the long run what if you I... could program it to like identically match someone you love who died like i sure. just thought yeah. oh, they'll yeah. absolutely do that wouldn't they that be a wonderful use for it like what if it like sure. somehow could exactly be if there's enough data about that person, yeah. I know. You, do you want to talk data. to grandma? Yeah. yeah. Grandma. No, wait, I don't know. The possibilities so are you don't interesting. Know this. So you guys don't know this story? You, no. Do you guys watch Black Mirror? Oh, uh, I only watched season one and only part of it. I have yeah, not I seen the latest. Season one. There's some weird ones in season one. <laughs> I know, so I I there's one it. in... Sorry, for, spoiler alert. There is one where this guy and this girl are married... And the guy dies while texting while driving, and an AI basically creates a simulation oh. of his consciousness I saw that into yeah. his actual body. It's a clone yeah. of him. Yeah. And they the kids are there, like mm -hmm. they have kids, right? Mm -hmm. And it's and it's him and her. But what she notices is is that he's one percent off. He's just mm -hmm. a little bit off. And they had scenes in the beginning that were annoying, and he doesn't do the annoying things later on, and it drives her nuts that he's not the same thing. But now here's the deal. By the end, she makes him stay in the attic until the kids come home because she can't be around them. But the kids love the clone mm. because they put the AI into the guy and yeah. <laughs> talk about trippy, weird stuff, right? Like, but it this is. is like, if you, if you try this pie thing, you're like, this is going to get really weird really quick. Because if it can be, if it can get a master's degree in math, Mm -hmm. And writing, what happens when the supercomputer is a master in persuasion? And then what's if it's in the wrong hands and you can gaslight anybody on anything? <laughs> Let's Brexit and re-Brexit every three years. I think that's Damn. a great idea. <laughs> yeah. You know? Anyhow, sorry, yeah. we just got into dystopia. That's like yep. a yep. very yeah, and, and that's a wrap. <laughs> okay, <laughs> glad we covered that. Note. Let's go back we'll, we'll to a world that's not like that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, no, I think is... actually that ties back though to the beginning because it's about persuasion and what is the risk of this and social engineering yeah. and AI can it hack you know language and therefore hack behavior of people. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
So yeah, let's. Uh, uh, I think if we quarantine Joe's brain over here and keep it separate <laughs> from AI over here, that will we'll all be safe going forward. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Well, I think we're getting to about that time. Joanna, thank you so right. much. Um, thank you for having me. To our me. listeners, if they wanted to find out you about your books, about your training, where would they go? Yeah, over, I'm still on Twitter, at Coffee Hackers with an S, um, or on CoffeeHackers.com. Thank you. Right. Or LinkedIn, right. Joanna. We, yep. and, and it is still the main source of education for copy conversion copywriters everywhere. Let me just go a little bit farther and point out that Joe's stuff has influenced thousands. I mean, there's so many people. It's basically two kinds of conversion copywriters, people that have taken her course and those that haven't. That's my little pitch. And also, Thanks. you can see her at our conference, Content Jam, later yes. this year. It's uh, yes. October in Chicago. Come to Content Jam, and jo where Joe will be teaching um, yeah. maybe the latest on her uh, persuasion techniques and money words. Yeah. That's great. I'm going straight from Content Jam to see you two in Vegas, by the way. VIP <laughs> Good floor for tickets. you. I'm very excited. Yeah. Wow. Side note. <laughs> anyway, that'll be a that'll be I'm an excited. awesome and very human experience. It, I hope so. Yes. All right. Well, thank you. And to our audience, uh, please do all the standard stuff. Like, subscribe, click the notification bell, la, 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 la. Our goal is to bring uh, the, the best thought leaders in all of marketing uh, to you guys as much as humanly possible. We'll put out episodes between one to two a month. And Joanna, you are absolutely a legend. So thank you so much for joining us. So nice. And Thank we you will so see much. you next time. Boom.